Welcome to Mikon's Hardware. In this video, I'm going to tell you about this MXM graphics card or MXM module, which is AMD Fire Pro S7100X. The graphics card was sent to me by a Slovakian store, wstore.sk, so if you're interested to buy this or some other graphics card, feel free to follow the link provided in the video description. Before I proceed with the video, though, I would like to mention that while you are watching this video, there is a horrible war in Ukraine. At the moment, I am trying to do everything I could do to help my family in Ukraine, my friends in Ukraine, and Ukrainian people who left Ukraine. Thus, I am asking you to do everything you could do as well. I decided to make these technical videos because if I work non-stop, sleep very little and just focus on the horrible news, I'm going completely crazy. That's why I need these technical videos to first being able to focus on something else and second to be able to earn some extra money on YouTube and spend this money to support Ukraine in this horrible fight against terrorists. With this, let's go into the technical details of this AMD Fire Pro S7100X. So, technical specification of AMD Fire Pro S7100X. Here I will be comparing this MXM module to NVIDIA P106M, which I have tested in one of my previous videos. S7100X uses Amethyst GPU die, which is a variant of Tonga GPU die. The Tonga GPU die can be found in desktop graphics cards such as AMD R9 285X. But unlike the desktop variants, which are coming with a 2 or 4 GB of video memory, S7100X has 8 GB video memory on board. At the same time, the GPU frequency is reduced to just 725 MHz. Memory clock frequency is just 1250 MHz. If I compare this to P106, which has GPU clock of 1300 MHz and memory clock of 1500 MHz, we can see that P106 has a much newer architecture with much higher clock frequency. The TDP rating of P106M is also just 75 watts, while S7100X is rated as 100 watts. Unfortunately, both of these MXM modules do not have any video outputs. Even if you have a laptop or a mini computer which has display port or HDMI port connected to your MXM expansion slot, these ports are not going to work because these two GPUs do not have any functional video outputs. To keep my AMD Fire Pro S7100X cooled, I have used exactly the same solution as I used for my P106M. That time I have installed the Intel Box Cooler on top of P106M with some modifications. In case of Fire Pro S7100X, we have a naked die, and it is very important to put your heatsink right on top of the GPU die so it touches every piece of the GPU crystal, otherwise the GPU may overheat in some certain spots and your system will be unstable. Since S7100X is an MXM module, you will need a mini computer or ultra slim computer with an MXM expansion slot. As I have shown in my previous video, using PCI Express X1 to MXM adapter is completely pointless if you are planning to play games. PCI Express X1 bandwidth is way too little to be able to play games at any reasonable frame rate. Thus, in this case, I am going to use my HP Elite Desk 800 G1 USDT mini computer. This mini computer has a proper MXM slot, thus I can just plug in my S7100X. The rest of the technical specification is Intel Xeon E3 1265LV3, 2 sticks 8GB each, SK Honix DDR3-1600, and 2 SSDs, 240GB as a system drive and 2TB for games and software. Unfortunately, the video BIOS is fully locked and it is not possible to overclock the GPU using MSI Afterburner or any other software. I have tried to find BIOS from other GPUs which have the same GPU die and the same 8 gigs of video memory, but these GPUs are very unique and I was not able to find a compatible video BIOS. Looking at the technical specification, we could try BIOS from AMD Radeon E8550, R9M395X and R9M485X. Finally, I tried to use Tonga BIOS Editor to increase clock frequency of my S7100X. Sadly, after flushing the modified BIOS, my S7100X got bricked. Of course, I have restored the original BIOS, but only to get completely disappointed. My GPU doesn't work anymore. 
The GPU is still detected in the GPU-Z, but it is not usable for anything and GPU-Z reports that we have 0 GB of video memory. Nevertheless, we can still take a look at the stock results of AMD Fire Pro S7100X, starting with the 3D Mark Fire Strike. Much to my surprise, in this benchmark S7100X is slightly faster than P106M, 7600 points against 7400 points. In 3D Mark time spy, we are getting almost identical results. S7100X delivers 2305 points and P106M has 2361 points. Far Cry New Dawn though thinks that P106M is a better GPU. S7100X is only able to deliver 33 and 43 FPS, while P106M delivers 37 48 FPS. Far Cry 6 also thinks that P106M is a better GPU, but this time the gap is not that big. 3642 FPS for S7100X and 4045 FPS for P106M. Assassin's Creed Odyssey is pretty much optimized for Nvidia GPUs and here S7100X is struggling to keep up with P106M. 19 and 37 FPS compared to 2551 FPS of P106M. Assassin's Creed Valhalla is a much newer game which is much more optimized for AMD GPUs, still P106M is slightly ahead. S7100X delivers 2736 FPS, while P106M gives us 2943 FPS. Horizon Zero Dawn is a rather modern and very demanding game. Here P106M is struggling to deliver reasonable minimal FPS due to 4GB video memory limitation. S7100X, which has 8GB of video memory, doesn't suffer as much. S7100X delivers 34 and 41 FPS, while P106M with just 4 gigs of video memory has dips to 10 FPS on minimum and 44 FPS on average. In the modern F1 2021 game, S7100X comes a little bit ahead of P106M. It delivers 79 and 97 FPS, compared to 79 and 94 FPS of P106M. Shadow of the Tomb Raider does not see a winner between these two, 3950 FPS for S7100X and 4050 FPS for P106M. Combining all seven games together, we are getting the following picture, 38 and 49 FPS for S7100X and 3754 FPS for P106M. The minimal FPS value is so bad for P106M because of Horizon Zero Dawn. This game uses more than 4GB of video memory and P106M dips to 10 FPS on minimum. Still, on average I would say that P106M is a better GPU, but don't forget to compare the prices. For the conclusion, I can say the following. Even though my particular S7100X died on me after trying to do some bias modifications, I still think this is a very viable option if you have a use for it. The performance is somewhere around NVIDIA P106M, unfortunately it's slightly slower than that, but on the other hand we have 8GB of video memory if you need that, of course. Just like NVIDIA P106M, we also don't have any video outputs with this S7100X, which is a very big shame, but it is what it is. With the current pricing, I would say that uh, P106M is a better option and sometimes you can find them much cheaper than S7100X. But if you can find S7100X for a reasonable price or you cannot find P106M and maybe you need 8 gigs of video memory which this GPU provides, then this might be a good option. With this, I have to say thanks for watching, thanks for listening, I hope it was interesting, bye bye.